Hello, here we are again. I am Caroline, in case I always forget to introduce myself. I am behind for the love of crochet. Um, I am here in California, just a valley girl here in California. And I have a nice little video set for you today with some completed objects and one work in progress. And um, for those of you who'd like to follow me, like I said, I, I keep updated on my Instagram account. So that's Crow Joy for the love of crochet. That's my Instagram handle and um, I will go ahead and link it down below. But it's also in my YouTube space. There's little links up on my board. There's my Goodreads, my Instagram. I think that's it. So yeah, if you'd like to stay in contact with me or message me, I think Instagram would be good because I don't always get the notifications for YouTube. But thank you for watching. If you're here as a returning viewer and if this is your first time, I share all my makes and just the love of crochet. I was taught to crochet by my mother when I was about 10 and she taught me how to chain. That was the first thing you learn how to do when you want to crochet is you chain. And then I had this huge long chain that I would get really good at. And so then I was able to move on to the next step. And my favorite thing to do back then <laughs> was the granny square. So the granny square just has a special place in my heart and still does many, many years later. <laughs> okay, so here we are. I do have some lovely makes for you. Now, one of them is a repeat from those baskets that I made in a previous video. There was three baskets, a bear, a fox, and a raccoon. And I was gonna go ahead and make them again, but I ran out of the fox color. And I also ran out of the gray yarn. So I just put a halt to it and I just made the bear. And I am getting better at it. So it's really neat. I really like these, these baskets. They are so cute. So this one has been, this has been the first make I've made because it's a repeat off of last week's or last episode. <clears throat> but since I ran out of those colors of yarn and I couldn't complete the set, I went ahead and decided to make a bonnet. Oh, and I like this, this, um, I also made a fox one last episode. So this one I decided to make a cub, little bear cub, and he is so cute. So this is supposed to be a bonnet for a baby, and it is small. I mean, it just takes up my hand, and it is so cute. And um, the reason why I went ahead and did the bear, because I had already done the fox. Okay. And then I want, oh, darn, I, I'm recording with my phone. Darn it. Okay. So with Libby, there is an app you can get on your phone, right? Called Libby. And you can check out books from the library. You, they can be audible or you can read them on your device or, um, and you check things out from the library through this app and it's really cool. You just insert your, your library card number and it links you to the closest to the library or whatever one you want to be connected with. And so with that, I was able to make, okay, I checked out three crochet books. I was so shocked. So here are all these patterns for these wonderful from these wonderful magazines that I don't have to buy or subscribe to. And it's just right there on my phone. And what's great about it is it broke it down. So with a magazine, they put them in pages. However, with the app, you get to look at it as a magazine. But then if you touch the the um pattern that you want to do it just it blanks everything out and then this pattern pops up 
and it was all gray and the letters were white. And I just thought, oh, this is so neat. I even was like, tick, 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 for the ones I wanted to do later. <laughs> when, okay, so it automatically takes it back after 21 days. So you get the check this magazine out for 21 days. And obviously, you know, if you want it again, you can check it out again. But I made the most awesome basket. <clears throat> it is so adorable. <laughs> and I learned some new techniques with this basket in comparison to the construction of this one. So notice this one has those little kind of hard to hold those little dents because I'm t I'm doing it tight and um, well this pattern removes all that so I learned something new and it's just nice and sturdy and there's no dents and the construction on the bottom was amazing so I learned so many things with this pattern now this one came out of a magazine too but wow the the comparison of difference of the construction of this one and the construction of that one i'm like woo this is so cute so i made an elephant <laughs> it is so cute and i thought oh hopefully it'll nestle in but it's just a little bit too tight i mean i could shove it in there but again it's not going to be nestled in neatly so yeah i really like woo, the elephant and his ears. I just, I was amazed. First of all, I was so excited I could rent things, magazines and crochet books through the Libby app. Not everything. So the, all the newest crochet books are not going to be available to you. Some will and some won't. But yeah, this is just so neat. I love it. I was so happy with the way that that came out and I, the, the stitch pattern and how it's constructed is just done so well. Okay. I feel like I'm losing my breath. So, okay. Now for an amazing project I finished. Sorry if you hear all that. I made this sweet blanket as a crochet. Um, it's so cute. It's so pretty. Okay, so I was commissioned to do a baby boy blanket and I gave this person two options. And one of them was this one. Now, <laughs> this is made using a cotton yarn from Hobby Lobby, the Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids. And this one is, the, the light blue is called Ice, Ice, Ice Blue. And all it took was three balls to make this. And I had just a little bit left. I was playing yarn chicken. I was hoping not having to buy another, a fourth ball or cake, I should say, because it comes in a cake. But this is so cute. Now, <clears throat> this blanket, oh, it's so cute. I changed the pattern. Now this person, I got this and I will link it below. I got off of YouTube. She did one of the best YouTube tutorial videos on creating this blanket. So thorough, especially if you're a beginner. I mean, you would have to know your, how to make a magic ring and you would have to know your stitches, but she did such an incredible job on teaching and tutorial for this blanket. And what's cool is, she also made a pattern to go with this for a onesie, a bonnet, slippers, little little booties. I think an um I think a little baby toy. And it's all got the same theme. And I think you applique this to the onesie if I'm correct. 
but I did not watch those videos. I did not do that, those patterns. I just did the blanket and I did change the border. She did a squared off diamond border and I wanted a pico border. So I decided to go with that. And I won with my yarn chicken. <clears throat> so it's where you're trying not to run out of yarn before you finish your project. And uh, she's uh, very pleased with it. I'm very pleased with it. I think it came out so beautiful. And I'm going to box it in my uh, Bella Coco box. And they have this nice Velcro. But because I was emptying a box to gift it in, So nice. Since I was going to use this box, I emptied the contents of it. I don't like my hair. Um, so I emptied the contents, and with emptying the contents, I made another finished object. I'm going to set this over here. Okay, so this is what was in this. It is a bag. Now I've been making those baskets and this is supposed to be a bag so it's not a basket it's a bag and it is a nice size it's got a nice little handle however I'm already canceling my subscription for this crochet society because as I've mentioned in other videos by the time I get this box in California in the valley from the UK my box is damaged. And if I wanted something from that box, like yarn, I would have to wait a long time. It takes a long time for shipping and it's expensive to ship. So I decided, well, it's not worth it because you only get two or three balls of yarn of different colors. And that's not like I can make something significant, like a blanket. It would have to be something small like this. So here is the leftover yarn it was a very thick one and I don't know what number box oh wait does it say on here so I could have made the cowl I don't wear cowls and I live in the valley which is really hot so I made the pure bliss handbag now I felt like the instructions were wrong in comparison to the video so I was following the instructions for here but when I got to the bottom it it was telling me to do something and the video was doing something else so it was weird now this is coming out like the picture but the dirt I don't know but again these are written in UK terms but a slip stitch is the same in both and she was doing a half double crochet and on here it's called back one chain double crochet. Anyway, maybe I just, because I'm not used to the, the UK terms. Anyways, I followed the video and I came out right for the, for the ending part. Cause this is where it transitioned from the gray to the beige. So yeah, I don't know what I'll use it for. It is a nice little bag to throw something in. Um, but it is flimsy in comparison to a basket, but I like it. I don't know what I'll use it for yet, <laughs> but I made it because I was emptying that box and I just, I have not made a single thing from those crochet, crochet society subscription boxes. So that's the first thing I've made. Now on to my works in progress, works in progress, whips, whip it. Okay, let's see. I got this book. So I got a commission to do a baby girl blanket, but they didn't want the one I had done with the teddy bears. They wanted a different one and a girly one. And it had to be boho, boho theme. So I was thinking beige, whites, sage green, which is that very light green. And then I just thought pink for 
baby girl. And I had gotten this book and I, I love granny squares, but I wanted to give it some hexy love. If you feel me, I wanted to do some hexy love because I think you can make really cool designs out of hexagons. And so I was coming up with an idea because they give you very cool designs. How many designs? <sighs> okay, so they have the granny hexy, they have the solid hexy, and so each one of these has a different, a different design. Like this one has a flower, this one has a flower, and so I was thinking I could do, so you get a bunch of different patterns to do different types of hexagons. And then you, as you switch colors, you can make them look super cool and neat. And even give so many designs. So here they just did a solid, um, a flower granny with, but they used all the same one, just different colors. But you could also use all the different designs of hexagons and make this a completely different like a shawl or whatever shrug so here they used a solid uh the flower one the african flower hexagon now i thought about doing this one but then you could also like i said switch it up and it'd be coming a different you can use all kinds of different hexagon and different and use the same colors for the whole pack i don't know if i'm making sense but you can get very creative with hexagons and colors because there are so many designs for hexagons, but they're all the same size, so you can stitch them together. So I was thinking of trying to do that. Here, let's see. See, you switch up the colors. And then this one's pinks. Okay, so I made a practice one. And here it is. I did not have lavenders or pinks or even the sage green. This is the only closest to a boho sage green I could get. And I wanted to hurry up and start or practice and give this person an idea of what I was gonna create. So here is the hexagon and I like it. I don't favor the colors. I mean, it's okay. But I don't have enough anyways. But this person had a hard time visualizing, well, what's it going to look like at the end? So I'm going to have to make it. Anyway, if you have some ideas for a boho baby blanket, please let me know. And that is going to be my work in progress. I was going to try and incorporate hexagons into this baby blanket. Now, I really like this book. However, it's written in UK terms again, and I did not realize that. So I actually used US terms to make this. It would come out smaller in UK terms. Oh, I gotta get, so I'm gonna be very fluent in UK terms pretty soon. Right now I have to like pause and think. Um, so here's See how you could just switch up the colors, but again, this one looks like it has the same hexagon. They're using the same one, just different colors. But I was thinking of using the same colors and differentiating all the different types of hexagons. It's so cool. I really like this book, but UK terms, meaning they're not written in standard US terms. Let's see, they didn't mix up their hexagons in their patterns. They stayed with one, but you can mix them up. So this is supposed to be a blanket. No, a shawl. But it's very colorful. I think it'd be cool for a girl blanket. So yeah, that's going to be my work in progress. Thanks for hanging around. I hope you um, found some of these. I hope you learned about this Libby thing. If you haven't already, check it out. It is so cool. I'm, I'm thrilled. Let's see if I forgot to mention anything. Um, okay. Nope. 
forgot to bring my sweater that I made for my daughter. So I got to test a pattern and I did show pictures of it at the end of the last um, crochet podcast I did. So that was really nice. She loves that sweater. She's doing really good. She wants to wear it all the time and it hasn't snagged. Now, usually when I wear a crochet sweater, I tend to snag it on things. She's done great and I've taken her everywhere in that thing. She's worn it a lot and she likes it. So I'm really happy that that came out great. Yeah. So that was really nice. Thanks for watching and hopefully I see you soon. Leave me some comments um, about your ideas if you have to help me think of a boho theme baby blanket. I can certainly use some inspiration, um, especially like a completed project so I can show the person what it might look like. Okay, I shall talk to you later. Bye.